kind of during a during a house transaction, I went through and found out that uh, the house had termites. So we went through and called around, found out termites cost a lot of money. They they run about two thousand um, dollars. The guy came out and did it, and he didn't do it right. That's the very first part, which I know now. I didn't know back then. And then um, there's just a lot to termites. Termites could be, you know, you've got your pre-construction, your post-construction. Well, long story short, you can, I could rip you off a million different ways. I could use a lower grade product. I can, I can go through and use a product that's not as good or as expensive and then tell you I'm using the best stuff. I mean, there's so many different ways to rip someone off. Um, give you an example, carpenter ants. Carpenter ants, I see pest control companies creating a, huge invoice for carpenter ants but really the products that take care of carpenter ants don't cost that much so you you there's so much ripoff in this industry and um we had some lady that got quoted eleven hundred dollars for bed bugs and i came over and i said i actually think you'll have fleas and so we did a flea treatment at a hundred bucks we saved her eleven hundred dollars like it's being true to those things but anyways getting that was a little bit off subject but um that's what got me in there was dishonest business practices. And I, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do this. And I just jumped in. I had no experience, but I knew that I could do it better. Um, just based on your moral and ethical compass. We'll call it that. Welcome to Winning Strategies Playbook. The podcast where we welcome business leaders, CEOs, and industry experts to discuss the rise to the top, building wealth, and real estate insights. Here's your host, Jeremy Spann. Welcome to Winning Strategies Playbook. For more information on this show, you can go to our website, myexperiencedrealtor.com. From my fellow Marines, that's experienced with an ED. You heard that, Scott, right? ED. <laughs> we don't get accused of being able to spell so right. So you go to myexperiencedrealtor.com. You click on podcast, scroll down to uh, this episode or other episodes where you can download this from all the different platforms and, uh, of course, hit the read more, find out more about our guests and their business. Naturally, if you're going to look to buy and sell real estate anywhere on the planet, go to the homepage, click Find a Trusted Professional. We will find somebody that will look after your interests, that will take very good care of you. Actually, Span Group with uh, Sotheby's four years in a row now has done the most closed outgoing referrals, Scott. That's because what we do is we, we don't go find morons. We go find good people. So let's talk about this. We ain't talking, well, we kind of talk about a little bit of real estate today, a little real estate related things today, but I want to welcome my good friend, fellow Marine Scott Myers. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. So what we got to do is my father-in-law says we always got to start this off with a joke. And to annoy him, annoy him, I purposely pick bad jokes. So you ready for this, Scott? All right, let's hear it. All right. My wife just found out I replaced the bed with a trampoline. She hit the ceiling. <laughs> I think we need to go ahead and skip to that bottle. We're, we're, here's what we're going to do. So what, <laughs> I think we need to skip if you're, to that if you're watching alcohol. this right now, and uh, my, my, my great producers are over here uh, uh, recording uh, for a little live on social media action, is, is uh, if you're watching this, what you're going to find is that we have a, a, a bottle of TX bourbon uh, that was brought to us from Cheryl Hayes. Uh, uh, she got the calendar a little bit confused and we've been recording all day. I saw her when we were recording uh, uh, with our last episode and I really wanted to stop and say hi, but we were in the middle of recording it. But uh, that's okay, because she bought this bottle. It's very nice. Thank you, Cheryl, if you're listening to this episode. I really appreciate the nice note and, uh, and I appreciate this very, very nice bottle of uh, Texas straight bourbon whiskey finished in cognac cask is that how you say that's how you say it? cognac did i say that right gage is usually over there either nodding yes or shaking no so it must be right and so that's what we're going to do is we're going we're scott and i are going to do a little episode here uh with a little bit of bourbon going since it is our last episode that we are recording for this series and uh uh so that's how that's how we're going to do this show and uh here, that's good enough, right? This is going to go good with your Red Bull, right? Yeah, I was about to say, I can yeah. see they're getting small, small, big, big. Oh, yeah. And so, Sienna, and uh, I want to say for the rest of the team, Aaron and Gage, thank y'all for doing everything that you do. You make it really easy. I like writing a check and just showing up and talking to people, listening to them talk. And so, here we go, as we say in the Marine Corps Semper Fi, Dallas. Thanks again, Sienna. 
You don't have to record all day if you don't want to, unless you just want to keep it going. Doesn't matter to me. Well, I'll stop in a second. But I'm just humored by this. Mm. Oh, that does not suck, does it? That is some good taste in bourbon. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Bourbon gets me in trouble. Got me in trouble this last week, Scott. So uh, I was telling you, you know, we've been recording like 16 episodes over four days, and we got a lot of folks flying all over the U.S. And I had a mutual connection that we had been introduced a couple months ago. We never met. He's got a marketing firm out in D.C. He owns two bars down in D.C. And so when he flew in Monday to be on the show that evening, uh, Ricky and Kaz and James and I, we went over with him to the Fort Worth Club. I might be getting a notice from Fort Worth Club saying I'm not welcome back after you have uh, four Marines in there drinking a lot of bourbon. So we were in there drinking, and uh, and we drank quite a few old fashions. And then I was like, man, I got to go home. Matter of fact, I had to put Ricky in an Uber. I had to get him out of there, man. He was, he was, you know, Ricky's a Miller Lite drinker, so enough of them bourbons. I said, man, it's time for you to go. We got him out of there. And then we were sticking around, and finally I was like, hey, man. And that was, Mon- remember, Monday it was pouring. It was raining. I mean, it was coming down hard. And so we, uh, uh, I walked with him back over to his hotel, and he goes, hey, come in here and just get one last drink with me. That was a fucking lie. Yeah. That was more than one more. And so I made it home. I was responsible. I took an Uber. Woke up the next morning. And uh, when I woke up the next morning, I was like, that was not wise decision making last night because I had a whole week to go record. But we're not here to talk about <laughs> my bad behaviors. We're here to talk about Scott's bad behaviors. I mean, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. So, Scott, for the audience, let's talk about where you're from and how you got to where you're at now. Well, I'm from the Dallas Worth area. I grew up over in the Louisville area. Um, currently living over by Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, I guess the journey starts whenever I graduated high school, went to the Marine Corps, um, did active duty for four years, and then I got out, became a contractor. I started doing contracting over in Afghanistan, came back, joined the reserves, and that really wasn't what I expected from the Marine Corps. Um, Went back over as a contractor, did contracting for about another four or five years. So, I mean, I spent numerous back-to-back times over there and then came back I became a police officer um, did that for five years decided that hey um, I wrecked a police car at 110 <laughs> that's another story I uh, had two guys try to shoot me on a traffic stop and then while chasing them I ended up impacting a vehicle at 110 um, got let go from the city they went there and got sued for $250,000 and said hey you got to go so I went to county and I did that for about another nine months as a reserve officer, and then I started my own business, and it's kind of taken steps to go through and kind of keep getting ahead. Um, whenever you start your own business, and I'm sure you can relate to this, I don't know, maybe over there, if you want to look it up on Google, but once you start your own business, it's it's got its learning curves going from Marine Corps to contractor, contractor to police officer, and then not having the business experience and jumping right into business. It was the first time I was exposed to that. Um, Really big learning curves. Yeah, learning how how it works and. Um, let me so let me get this straight. I just want to ask you a question. Marine question, right? Correct. Math for Marines. <laughs> so what you're saying is the level of success you have now. You didn't just step into that. No, not at all. What? Yeah. Oh, I thought business was easy. I thought when you wanted to own your own company and build your own business, you just. Like read it in a book, saw it on a YouTube video, and showed up, and boom, you're making money, right? No, not at all. It's the, <laughs> it's the hardest thing is to learn all how to do your quarterly filings for taxes, how to do your, you know, to form a company, which one, LLC, sole proprietor, and this and this, LLP. And, um, you know, I put it together. No one else put it together for me. Um, I had a good idea. I wrote it down on a napkin. It's also aligning yourself with who can work with you and finding out which one's going to stab you in the back. You'll find that out. There's a lot of people, you know, um, they don't see your vision. They don't see your, what you're shooting for. You might have it worked out in your head. And if everybody were to do this, everybody would benefit. But this person has that agenda. This person has that agenda. You have this goal. And sometimes those don't align. Um, you know, I've ran into a couple of Marines, Marine Corps. Hey, who am I going to go, uh, go get involved in this? You know, uh, had one guy, he went there and wanted 33% of my company. He said he had the money to invest in this. Well, come to find out he didn't. 
he wanted me to take out a, be- a business loan and then me give away 33%. And you're like, that's a bad deal. Yeah, you Why? can do that without him. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then whenever you don't go along with that path because of that agenda, next thing you know is he comes after you with a knife in your back. Um, there's a lot of learning there. There's a lot of learning in even just scheduling. You know, I jumped into the pest control industry. Uh, I knew that it was repetitive, that there was good money to be made. There's a couple things protected by a license. The education, it's not just hey, I can go through and start this. There's laws and regulations. There's, it's a ton. You've got to work for a person that's certified for a period of time before you can get certified. You know, it's kind of a protected eight. Whereas a pool cleaner, I can go through and learn how to clean a pool. I can be in business the next day. Tech- or real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you used to work at a strip club and you can go to a class and get a license, the barriers are kind of low. Well, in that case, I'll be signed up tomorrow. <laughs> We won't, I left that part out of the resume, but what I'm getting at is it's a protected industry. Right. And so that's one of the reasons why everybody is like, hey, I want to do this. And I'm now, like, when you say protected uh, with the licensing, you're not just talking about a simple certification because there's chemicals and all this other stuff that you can't around. T- tell the audience a little bit about that, because I think one of the things about this show is I think a lot of people might go, yeah, I've got a pest control guy, but they might not know, know you don't just go down to Walmart, pick up some, you know, yard whatever and come spray some stuff right there's some there's some stuff that can get you in a hot barrel if you don't have the right components right to a degree well even operating without that license is a huge fine from Texas Department of Agriculture I mean you can go to jail they have their own in- inspectors if you go through and really screw up they'll t- they'll go down and get you arrested um, it's kind of like the Alcohol Beverage Commission you know TABC they have a Department of Agriculture has their own small <laughs> There we go. He's hitting the, <laughs> hitting the alcohol again. Um, it's a protected in a lot of regards. There's there's multiple levels. There's the federal, you know, you've got federal laws. You've got state laws. You've got county laws that are applicable. And if you violate any of those, you're either going to get a good fine or you're going to go through. And, you know, there's in extreme cases, the guy out in Amarillo, you know, if they're selling these products and someone dies, um, it happened. There was a. A gentleman who went there and killed his wife and kids or something by putting this stuff underneath his mobile home they they got involved in that i don't know what the outcome was but i'm saying whenever you know you've got certain things that can really land you in hot water so it's protected because of the education involved you know um that's one of the reasons why i chose it so i could see that the different dynamics that this is kind of a specialized you know you go through and go hop on facebook and you go hey who who knows a realtor next thing you know is you've got 10,000 people going dink, 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 dink. Mm-hmm. And all right, same thing with house cleaning or mowing or this and this and this. Well, then you go through and you go, Hey, who owns a pest control company? And, and there's very few of those. I mean, there's still a lot, don't get me wrong, but statistically numer- numerically speaking, you might want to edit that out. Um, <laughs> TX the, catching up there you go. already. It was real quick. Maybe I'm but, have a Marine talk right there. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> It's protected in that sense, and there's not as so you have the choice between a large company like Orkin, Terminex, Home, you know, some of your big ones, or you got the mom and pop ones that smell like cigarettes that run around and that barely, you know, they go down to Ace and they, you know, so where's the middle ground in that? And so that's kind of where the where I've kind of fit in, you know, it's we're not big, I'm not a huge company yet, and we're not also a mom and pop, you know, so we're kind of in that middle ground or trying to get to that middle ground. Um, but yeah, I was about to say it's. It's kind of a unique industry. For well, sure. and, and I tell you, uh, interesting enough, I mean, you and I have known each other coming up on a year now, and uh, that's one of the platforms I wanted to take with my real estate fund, right? So you got all these landlords of these off campus, te- you know, student rentals where they milk them, right? I mean, it's blood out of a rock. And we wanted to be like, hey, look, if you're going to live in our properties, we take care of your landscaping. We take care of your pest control. Because guess what? If you don't, the kids are going to be like, hey, there's bugs in here. And you're like, well, in your lease, it says you're supposed to do pest control, but you're still going to hear from them. So why not just not hear from them because you already got the pest control, right? We're going to change your air filters. We're going to go above and beyond in what we're doing. And uh, and so as I was going through that, right, you know, so I built the company with cats to do the maintenance stuff. I built the company with Brickety to do the landscaping stuff. You know, I've got James helping me with all this other stuff. But I was like, man, I need I need this pest control thing, and I can't remember if it was somebody that I called or or, or what it was. But they said hands down, you have to call Scott Myers. 
Right. And not, hey, here's here, here's somebody's number, or hey, you might pop in. I mean, there was, you have to call Scott Myers. And so for you, me, right, because words matter, right, I hear something like that, and I go, okay, that's an invocation of trust right there. And I was like, okay. And I was like, uh, is he a vet? And I can't. And, and 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 I think it was Donnie Bovine that was actually the one. It might have been Richard Price. It was, but it was one of the Marines that had, you know, been in these networking groups. And I was like, I was like, okay, all right. And uh, and I was like, vet. And, yeah, he's devil dog. No, all right. He said I have to. There's an invocation to trust. Not only a vet, a fellow Marine. Yeah. So called and and I remember the. I do remember the first time you and I talked on the phone. Is you know you were highly passionate, highly motivated. And you spoke with a level of sophistication that I was like, okay. And I kind of said, hey, this is what I got going. I would like to, uh, you try, you heard it, one Marine telling another Marine. He had some sophistication. I was and, about to say, were you talking You kind of looked at me. You, sure you were looking at me, me like, damn, yeah. how much of that TX you yeah. drank already? I don't know and, if sophistication uh, would be the word. So, but here is the best part was uh, I said, hey, this is what I'm going to try to do with these properties over the next year as we make acquisitions with them and so forth. And when we get them on platform for when we start pest control and so forth. And I was able to get an education from you, which I do want to dive in today so that way the consumer out there hears. It's not just somebody up here spraying and getting rid of your bugs and stuff like that. It goes more behind that, right? And so we'll, want to do, we'll dive in that in a second, but I got an education immediately out of you, right? Like, oh, wow. Matter of fact, you and I met first time at, uh, face-to-face September 28th at the Fort Worth Club when we had the big investor meeting, right? And so I was like, hey, Scott, Man, you're part of our team. We'd love for you to be there. We're, we're bringing all the investors in, and I want them to see all the players of the people that are, that are taking part in these properties, right? And then uh, we had just made, you know, our first turn into the fund and another major acquisition. I mean, we were we overnight doubled in size again, and it was like, okay, let's go, let's get ready. And the thing that I like easy buttons, right? Anything that can make my life easier is a lot better because that means I can focus what I'm good at in the business. And you and I have built this level of trust where all I got to do is go, hey, brother, this is the next set to go online. When's the next time you're doing your quarterly? Hey, uh, I do it in December. Cool. Add these properties. And then this last set for this last quarter, and then now we're up to, what, 30, 36 properties or something like that. Yeah, that 30, you, 38. 38, yeah. And, and it just you – and not only that it, is for the consumer out there – you're not only a part of taking care of the properties after we own the properties, but going out there when we're doing our due diligence on the properties, the right? Inspection. The inspection of like, hey, you got some wood destruction in, you know, insects or it's conducive to the thing and, you know, and all that. And so it made it really nice to have a fellow vet, a fellow Marine, a fellow professional. And like you said, not having to worry about somebody stabbing me in the back or me stabbing you in the back or anything else. Because I was real adamant about making sure you got paid. Right. Right. As a matter of fact, when you were like, hey, I could charge a quarterly, I was like, just bill me for the whole year yeah matter of fact here's the car right right so you don't even have to worry about it you just run the car send the invoice so the big part is is on the inspection part whenever you're buying a property is to have someone come out and look to make sure you're not having a problem but that also helps you with the negotiation side i'm sure that that's also been a key 100 percent. a key in some of your negotiations going through and saying hey this house has this and this and this and this and this and being able to bright you know bring that price down i don't know what y'all save yeah. but i'm sure that there's some savings somewhere because oh, yeah. we pointed no. out plenty of pro- problems many a times um i think that's been a useful thing is to identify that first and then the second one is ongoing maintenance like you said was you know we come out quarterly and then any time in between so i mean it's kind of worked for us as a small company gaining this many accounts and then it works for y'all where it's a handoff you don't have to worry about that it's a yeah call me text me and we're on our way yeah so it's been a pretty easy process yeah no i mean and like you said you know we all keep learning all the time right because we're learning to make it better smoother fitter you know the, the, those things and uh and it's been really cool that you've been a part of our processes as we've learned to be better at what we're doing and uh you know like even communication right like like oh hey well what okay now all right we got it this is who i communicate with this is who i talk to with this and so forth so forth and you're going to have those right Right. i mean like we were joking around about nobody just hands you a guidebook and says hey as long as you follow page one to page 300 and do all this then you're going to be just fine right And, and so we but the thing was is there's such a level of trust there that even even i can make a mistake and you're like no it's cool man look what what can we learn from this how do we make it better 
excellent, boom. And then it was like, hey, um, you know, on the billing, and you were like, well, yeah, actually it could be, you know, we could, we could just do this out. And, of course, I was sitting there, and I was like, man, i can be honest with you. I was like, I'd rather, I'd rather be able to handle one invoice on 100 properties once a year than to, hand her, to handle 100 properties with – Man, TX is yeah, already no, dumping in there. I can already hear it. Four times, four times a year, right? Because look, doing a hundred invoices versus four hundred invoices saves you time, saves me time, right? And and it was like, yeah, well, okay, well, here, here's the company card. Just run it and do it. And like even like the the new one that we're building, right? So that way you're able to get out there, do your own thing. I was like, yeah, cool, just run it, right? right. Run it's it been an easy process. It. We all yeah. we all got on the same communication app, and we've only yeah. used it once. The what's up whatever thread that we have yeah the WhatsApp. We've, yeah we talked the very first day that you told me to download it and then after that we've never had to talk because it's all yeah. push button it's really simple we've made it so, even simpler right right yeah i was about yeah. to say we it's pretty much muted that communication has it's been such an easy process that it's muted yeah um imagine if all your business was that easy i try to do that yeah believe it or not for the Let's most part it's kind of you know, it's streamlining your processes. It's going through and it's finding the, it took me a while. We were, we screwed up for years. It was kind of the same thing, you know. Um, you know, I started bug out. The reason why I got into pest control is because someone ripped me off in a pest control deal and I was mad and I was like, all right, well, that's it. Tell me, tell me what happened when you got ripped off on the pest control. Um, so kind of dealing a, during a house transaction, I went through and found out that uh, the house had termites. So we went through and called around, found out termites cost a lot of money. They, they run about $2,000. Um, I, the guy came out and did it and he didn't do it right. That's the very first part, which I know now I didn't know back then. And then, um, there's just a lot to termites. Termites could be, you know, you've got your pre-construction, your post-construction. Well, long story short, you can, I could rip you off a million different ways. I could use a lower grade product. I can, I can go through and use a product that's not as good or as expensive and then tell you I'm using the best stuff. I mean, there's so many different ways to rip someone off. Um, give you an example, carpenter ants. Carpenter ants, I see pest control companies creating a huge invoice for carpenter ants, but really the products that take care of carpenter ants don't cost that much. So you, you, there's so much ripoff in this industry. And um, we had some lady that got quoted $1,100 for bed bugs. And I came over and I said, I actually think you'll have fleas. And so we did a flea treatment at 100 bucks. We saved her $1,100. Like it's being true to those things. But anyways, getting that was a little bit yeah. off subject, but... Um, that's what got me in there was dishonest business practices. And I, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do this. And I just jumped in. I had no experience, but I knew that I could do it better. Um, just based on your moral and ethical compass. We'll call it that. Right. <laughs> no, I I mean, say, because look, for the, the most part, yeah. Acumen and everything right. else, because that's your why. Right? right. This is what the thing was. People say, what do you do or why do you do it? Right. And I think that the, well, the why of something is really important. Right. And for you, your your why it seems is not going through and of course I'm cheating a little bit because you and I've had this conversation before, is the why wasn't just you got ripped off. It was if I'm getting ripped off, how many people are out there getting ripped off? Right. And there's That's a, why I'm gonna build a business. Mine was I always wanted to be in business. I could see that, you know, the industry is protected a little bit. It's repetitive. You know, is there's a there's multiple things. I knew that I was going to get in a business. You know, how many times growing up did I hear, go get a real job. Don't do that. You need to go get a real job. You need to do this. And I tried that. It doesn't work that well. It's, yeah. it's you know, um, I started selling t-shirts. I started a t-shirt company a long time ago called drinkandtees.com. I was going to go sell funny t-shirts that I could make in bars, whatever, to the bar crowd. And, you know, I tried war tees. I went through and made a, an, Iraq, an Iraq spring break t-shirt. That so I sold a lot of them. It said, "Hey, while you were chilling, we were killing our act spring break." I was over there, and I, mm. I, anyway, my, I had one of my siblings went through and said, "Hey, you need to quit, cut that out, go get a real job." And I always knew that I was going to create something, and so, and it's been hard. I'm not going to lie; it's been. But that entrepreneur right. bug has always been in you, right? Right. You know what I call that, Scott? Passion. I don't know. Yes, is also that you and I are virtually unemployable. Oh, I would completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I are unemployable, and uh, he was getting it out of the way, so he didn't get in the way. No, I think it's because I'm leaning this way. (laughs) He does the same thing to me. Like my bad habit is leaning back. Is uh, um, but yeah, being virtually unemployable 
And really, I mean, that was kind of when I got through my journey to finally, you know, own them. I mean, I'd own businesses while working for other people and stuff like that. But when I felt fully didn't have to depend on somebody else to be in charge of my future or manipulate my future or decide what my future was, that is where I found freedom. I can never go back to a normal job. Anymore. No, way, I, no, I just can't. No, I'll um, go be homeless and eating out of a soup kitchen before I go to back to a nine to five. I, whenever I'd come home from overseas, contract doing, you know, all the fun stuff that I used to do, I couldn't find anyone that wanted to hire me. And the closest thing I found, all right, become a police officer. All right, that was pretty much a given. That was the, but I applied to a company and um, an electric company. I was trying to go through and become a lineman or something. I don't know, sixty thousand dollars a year, whatever. And the lady said, you've got an impressive background, but we can't hire you. You don't have any skills. And then they hired someone else with like four DWIs, but he had been working in construction and all that. So they, I had a job that paid me $7 and 80 cents to pull around boats around this boat yard. And I mean, I was just miserable, maybe $8 and 40 cents. I don't know. One of those numbers, yeah. we've been drinking whiskey, but <laughs> anyway, um, and now knowing what I know about working for yourself, I mean, I just can't do it. I, I'll, I'll get fired in a week. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I had a, a a recent thing. I can't really talk about it on the open air just because there's an NDA involved. But uh, I had someone trying to sell me something, and uh, I'll just put it this way. I started asking some questions, and I was like, oh, their analysts missed this. And basically the way it runs out is um, there is a certain type of product. We'll just say product, service, whichever, that I'll never – starting in 2026 based on what i you know i bought the deal and then they didn't realize it and uh and anyhow i'll, I'll never have after 2026 not only will i never have to pay for it ever again but i even got it set up where my daughter it'll pass down to my daughter that i'll never have to pay for it ever again and uh what i'll do is just because it'll make you laugh is uh that's what it is. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know how many of those there are around the world? Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of gay boys. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, the morning I, comes out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, but, but here's the thing. So as funny as in the conversation, um, uh, at, you know, when they were on the phone with the CEO and the CEO was canceling this thing, like, it, I mean, like, man, this is, this is crazy. You know, they're estimating that just the people that had bought the same product, had they figured it out, that the early on estimated conservative loss was about $100 million. That's a big, people get fired over that kind of stuff, right, for missing that. And it was funny, so the CEO of that company asked the guy that had reported all this and and uh, goes, um, how this guy figured it out? And he just goes, man, he's just a little bit of a different character, you know. And uh, he just goes, he literally did the math in his head. I mean, and he goes, he didn't have a computer sitting there or anything. He goes, man, you just, you should have seen it. He was just, he goes, he had some really, you know, open questions in the beginning and then got very interesting in his questions. I didn't think anything of it. And I was like, man, no one's ever asked me that kind of stuff. And then literally said, hey, here's a card. Run this quarter million dollars. I'll buy this thing right now. Give me the paperwork. And as soon as it was done, he goes, I have questions. And uh, so the guy looked at me and said, well, shouldn't you have asked those questions before you bought this? And I said, well, these are more rhetorical questions. I said, so in other words, I'm able to do this, I'm able to do this, I'm able to do this. And he's like, man, we never said that. And I said, no, 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 no. And then I just kind of, you know, trying to keep it very ambiguous because of the NDA for a reason. And he came out to it, and then he goes, so he's telling the CEO of this very large company, he goes, that guy, I sat there and watched him do it in his head. And he was like, how has nobody else figured out this? And then so the CEO asked him, said, uh, you think we could hire that guy? And uh, and, the guy, and so my guy started laughing and said, you don't want to hire this guy. And he says, why? He was like, dude, this guy, I mean, if he can do that sitting there in 90 minutes, what can he do for us? And he goes, I got to know this guy over the day, and I think he would agree if he was sitting here, he'd be your biggest pain in the ass that you'd have. And I know that about myself. Like, even during my time at the PD, I mean, I, I, I worked in a lot of units, and I'll just go ahead and say, well, I'll apologize to some, not all, because there were some supervisors I wouldn't piss on if they were on fire. Uh, but, you know, but there were a lot of them. I know I was a pain in the ass. I'll admit, I was a pain in the ass. But also, he told him, he goes, plus, he's the kind of guy that if he, if he comes in this organization, he's coming after your job. He wants your job. He, he was like, and, and then it was kind of funny, because then when the guy was telling me, and I said, uh, well, what you forgot, too, is y'all can't afford me. 
The other part is is that we like to drink in the middle of the day. So, right. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a couple mean, other. Not, I mean, it's only 2.35 yeah. on a Thursday, right? But I would say that's a, another part we can't be mm-hmm. horrible. You know what I mean? So, But point being right. is I don't want to be just anchored down to a company. That's not who I am. Uh, I like to, as an, one of my executive coaches that I've had in the past said, I'm, I'm really great at building a, when it comes to landscaping, let's say, I can build you the best foundation money could buy, and I can build you the best there is, but I will never get you yard of the month. I don't want to get somebody yard of the month. I'm good at building foundations. Right. I'm good at having vision and leadership. But I'm not good at managing and doing detailed stuff. So I really like building businesses and then finding people that can get them yard of the month because that's when it really gets profitable. It's going, hey, you're here to get it yard of the month. I gave you the foundation. You get yard of the month. Right, and I know it's one of the companies we have is a landscaping company. It's not necessarily to be you know out there talking about Ricky. Ricky been on the show, but that's but that's the point is that's how I enjoy being my own boss. I get to build things, and I have zero desire to run them. We're almost the exact same way. Like I yeah. have zero. It's the same thing. You can see a vision or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not really big on that. I'm same thing. I talk about the beef stew. Like all I care about is eating beef stew. I don't care about the individual onions, potatoes, carrots, and all that other stuff. Mine's more of just creating beef stew. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of align to that same thing. What do you think that started with you? You think that started when you were in the military, after the military, or do you think that was just always in you? I think up? always in me. Okay. Um, I think that I grew up. I'm not a big dude now, but yeah. I would say I grew up kind of a, a smaller kid. I used to get picked on, and I started finding out if you start knocking out people's teeth, they don't pick on you. So that was kind of, right? yeah, fourth grade, I had some karate kid that would run around. His parents owned a karate studio. He'd turn around and just karate chop you and kick you in the chest and all this. I knocked out two of his teeth in fourth grade. And next thing you know is he never, he never karate chopped on me yeah. anymore. So next thing you know is I was fighting everybody. And I did that all the way through. I still do it today. And so um, I, bet, I think that it's that go-getter attitude and mixed with environmental i think environmental is a big one you know you've got people who grow up in wealthy areas and there's two routes that they go their parents hand them a good opportunity if you have too much you can impact your kids and they're spoiled and they don't have that drive and then if you don't have it it's they're both hindering whether you have the high end or the low end not enough i mean somewhere in the middle it lies but you know i know people that are really well to do and their kids are the laziest always in trouble i mean i can get through the list of, of the laundry list they don't have and then you've got the ones that are broke that are they barely eat those guys are hungry mm-hmm. and it's the same thing it's a middle ground of it i think it's environmental mixed with kind of a little bit of you know passion on the inside that you're born with i don't know i'm not a psychologist I'm, yeah you know or like being but, in the marine corps right and in boot camp and uh Everybody's like, this sucks. And I was like, oh, man, we get to eat three times a day? I thought, people, And all I got to do is not die? This is great. <laughs> I thought people ate too much. Like, I thought, you know, I was expecting a lot more. Um, I'm not sitting over here and saying that there weren't challenging times. There was a lot of dumb people that went through and became Marines. I'm not going to lie. And yeah. everybody calls them dumb. Yes, I get it. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of, they just didn't have the drive that I thought. You know, I was like, what are you doing here? You ought to be in the Army. I mean, <laughs> his name is his name is Graham. If he ever gets yeah. on your show, it's Recruit Graham, yeah. Bravo Company, 99. Guess what? You should have went to the Army. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> don't give me, you know, don't give me, I told you. TX and Marine, <laughs> there you go. to the show. Um, <laughs> but now I'll give you an example. I started Bug Out. Bug Out was my first company that I actually when, developed. When did you start? When did you start that? 2016, I think, 2015. I broke my femur. I snapped my femur completely in half. Um, I've got a picture of it. I went through and did it within two years of me opening. I was going through a rough time. Like I said, it's hard. I went back to work within two weeks. Um, Who snaps their femur completely in half and goes, it takes a lot of drive. You've got to never, ever, ever give up. And And I'm glad I didn't. I mean, that's a pretty big break. It's clean through... That's that's a separation. That's more than a break. Yeah. Right? You think of break. I mean, that's a separation. That sucked. Yeah. There you go. You could Google yeah. that. <laughs> like, look at him. He's back there. He's smiling ear to ear. Uh, we were talking before this. He was, <laughs> he was like sitting over here saying he doesn't look up stuff on Google. So that's when the inside. Oh, that's yeah, the reason yeah, why yeah. I keep referring he, to Google. He, he, he's glass so, of TXN. He's yeah. over there. No telling what he's Googling. Yeah. He probably got some weird training porn or something over there going, don't you, Gage? Yeah. <laughs> 
So the the big one is never give up. I think yeah. that's the number one. Out of all the people that have stabbed me in the back, out of the learning curve where I screwed up, there was times I screwed up. You know, trying to schedule 200, 300 customers, and you're sitting over here and you got a little notepad, and you're like, okay, September, boom, boom, boom. I'd miss some. You know, there's business partners or blah, blah, blah. Whether I mean, it, the list is long and endless. Yeah. You know, um, I I could tell you a million ways that I've screwed it up. Yeah. And but, but being resilient though. But right? being right, having that next day, I'm waking up and I'm not stopping. Well, everybody goes through and says, well, it's just a small little pest control company. Well, now it's three pest control companies. I don't just yeah. own one. I've got three. Yeah. That two have recently been formed. They're on NDAs. I can't talk about it. Yeah. But um, I also have another company. I have another one. I have five that are that are in the works right now. One, you know, um, there's I know a lot we of, can't talk about the big thing you and I talked about the other day. I know we can't. It's huge. But when you, man, and you were excited. I mean, I'm still like excited. Were, I didn't sleep for I'm excited. Right. I'm excited for you. Like, that is, like, generational wealth changing. It's it's on its way. I'm, it's close, yeah. but I, yeah. it's yeah. it's nuts to be yeah. honest with you. It's kind of the same thing that you just talked about about yeah. figuring that out. I figured yeah. out. I saw something, and I was like, and all of a sudden, it started aligning itself. And I met someone who is now a ten percent owner in what we're doing. I own ninety percent of this, and they turned around and we went through, and it's it's insane. It. Yeah. I went through and was told on a Wednesday night. They went through and put the value on what I'm doing, and I literally they said you're not going to believe this, and I. They, Open the number and I turned around and I said, Oh shit, I can be Batman. And I was like, yeah. it's literally, literally you it's, can be it's, Batman. Right. It's yeah. literally life changing. So yeah. the next I didn't sleep for two, three days, and the number kept getting bigger and the number kept getting bigger. And now I've got some big fancy attorneys all involved and this and that. It's gotten it's gone insane. So it's not just bug out and the pest control, it's a progressionary here's the funny step. Thing. Here's a funny thing. It's not because it's pest control. No, it's not. Here's the deal. Here's what it is. It's your why. True. Your moral and ethical compass. You had a you, you whether it would have been pest control making TX bottle whiskey bottles, coffee cups, or whatever the widget would end up being. You identified uh, something that was a major void, and the major void being in an industry where there was a lot of cheating that could occur. Right. Still does. Yeah, it still is. Right. And, and actually, the more cheating that occurs, the more you benefit. Right. Because when people find out you're not a cheater, it's still, not hard to sell you. Right. I still screw up, but I don't intentionally go out of my way. But there's way. a you difference know, right. between a learning opportunity is what I call it or a mistake. Right. And being intentional on trying to screw over people. So, like, right. you, you've seen some of these deals we work in. A recent one that we just closed uh, was very challenging because of somebody who I thought had a very strong moral and ethical compass. Turns out their behaviors and actions defined that they didn't. Right. And not just to us in the deal, but to their tenants as we would come to find out. And, uh, and in that deal is that's why we are progressing in the area that we're in because not only for the tenants, but the parents of these tenants, right? I mean, these are the parents are the ones writing the checks to pay for the kids living in these houses, right? And they're like, okay, you guys have integrity. Y'all are responsive. Y'all are going above and beyond. And you know what? We're getting almost on average, almost on average, twice per head per month in our assets. Is that is that because our houses are better than other houses? No. It is because of our why and who we are and what we're doing and why we're doing it. Just like you. Your why was I've identified a void in an industry because there was there there, there was a there was a major lack of moral and ethical behaviors. And then you sat there and had that moment of well, if I'm getting screwed, how many other people are getting screwed? And hey, even it's kind of like, you know, kind of like our motto at Cowtown Warriors. Like, we're not going to change your life. We're just going to make it suck less. So all you got to do is all you got to do is suck less than everybody else with a moral and ethical compass. And guess what? The business is flowing in, right? Well, I'll give you an example of how people, I mean, there's so many ways. There's a hundred ways. I guess once you know an industry, you can sit over there and probably identify the same thing in any almost any industry. But it's, they'll send out a salesperson for termites, and what they'll do is they'll sit over there and they have those little monitoring stations. Well, some of their salespeople, from what I've heard, um, will place wood pieces right beside there to attract termites to them, so that way they have a greater chance of popping those, and then be like, hey, guess what? Look, you have termites on this monitoring station. Now we need to treat your house, and they'll go through and charge them arm and leg. You know, I, you're not going to catch me doing that. You're not going to catch yeah. me um, diluting my products down or, you know, 
it, it, there's a million different ways. It's kind of like what I talked about with carpenter ants and everything else. But, you know, I think the biggest one is don't ever give up. It's yeah. never give up. Never, ever, ever. Even whenever everybody else doubts you in the world. Oh, oh, oh watch this. Is, are you, let's see if the mic picks it up. <laughs> Gage is over there saying it. Uh, no, you, and you know what? And you're right. And that was when you and I, when you and I were sitting here talking uh, the first time, I could hear it off of me. One, again, and I'm pretty sure it was Donnie. It was Donnie or Richard, one of those guys. They didn't say, hey, give Scott a call. You have to use Scott. When you hear that from someone you trust in business, that conveyance of trust, and then just, you know, you, you, you've been a, just such a, a valuable resource for us, not just in the service you provide, but the education of what I've learned along the way. Like, give you, give you a prime example, right? And because uh, especially the houses where we have the girls, right? Is they go, they go, oh yeah, I filled that one up pretty heavy on you. Yeah, that's a lot bigger I was this time. Say, I was sitting over here going, like, I'm not a cheap date, but keep going. I'm not a cheap date. <laughs> See, you know, one of our producers over here. I am. I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, what are you talking about, man? I got pennies, man. I can get your clothes off real easy. Whoa. What are you talking about? Uh, 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 but it was just kind of funny as I wasn't even paying attention as we're do, as we're doing uh, uh, this TS Quissy. But but anyhow is, you know, naturally the the houses that we have girls in, right? You know, they're they're a lot more timid of the bugs, right? Because they're girls, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, look, my daughter is the most independent girl I've ever raised, my only girl I've ever raised, and probably I've ever seen in my life besides her mother. And when she sees bugs, she gets freaked out, right? It's a girl thing, right? Or even guys too, but I'd say more so on the girls. And uh, and and so. When we started some of these houses with the tenants currently in it, and I was like, hey, Scott, I mean, you went and sprayed, and why, why are all these bugs? And you were like, uh, hey, dum dum, when you spray them, they die. But now, after we get sprayed and keep up with the spraying, then we keep them out. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And you were like, well, then once we get that first inside treatment, then all we got to do is hit the outside treatment it is because all we got to do is keep them from getting to the, getting to the, the perimeter, right? The, the get them to the doorway, right? To a degree. Yes. To, to a degree, right? right. There, there's, there's, there's one off in other situations and all that. Just talking about in general practice. And then, so I was like, well, with the new houses that we have coming online, right, um, what could we do to alleviate that problem? You were like, start a quarter out before the new ones move in. That way, all the debugs on the inside died, for the most part, right? And then we got the preventative maintenance going afterwards. It should reduce the issue. And I was like, "Oh, well, okay, cool." And then that's the reason we had a lot more that started, you know, at the end of the first quarter here, because here, you know, in the third quarter, the end of the third quarter is when we got all the uh, new tenants moving in. And I was like, "That makes such sense, right?" I was educated in something. Right. right, and then that's what helped you. You're really good at, at dumbing things down for people like me to go, hey, no, I mean, you're, you're look, you're trying to overcomplicate this. Let's make it Jeff Foxworthy or you smarter than a fifth grader TV show. Here it is. Here's why. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then enough of those cases have occurred where now I, I literally can look at you and go, hey, here's the asset. You do your thing, right? And that's what makes it great. You know, because now again, you're my easy button. Selfishly speaking, you're my easy button. I don't have to probably worry about the that easiest point. one because it's yeah. all autopilot now. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I was about to say it's it's pretty simple. You know, pest control is not hard. I mean, it is. It takes a learning curve, but it, yeah. But I think that overall, it's just bigger than pest control now. Now it's been it's it's flourished as a entrepreneurial journey. You know, kind of like you, your opportunity is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah. And then there are certain occasions, which, or here, why don't you edu let's educate the, the audience on this, is we have seasons in Texas, right? Right. And we have houses that are pier and beam. Right. And there are periods of the year that even if you have pest control, they're still going to come out because of the season changing, right? So pier and beam houses are a little bit harder with, you know, you've got your a higher exposure to termites. You've got, you know bugs that have probably been living in a pier and beam house for decades and decades you know you've got wildlife crevices you know you've got to where bugs and animals and skunks and raccoons everything possums anything can climb underneath a pier and beam house whereas a slab you can't get under so all you got to do is control the outside of that and you're good um pier and beam houses they have a little bit more they're harder to deal with they get termites a lot more 
you really need to, whenever you're buying properties, having that crawl space inspected because now they can go up any of those piers versus on a slab house, they can only come up the, the uh, edge of the slab, yeah. edge of the slab or yeah. your plumbing penetrations. Right. You know, so you have more exposure on a pier and beam house. Um, you got to crawl underneath there and, and doing a termite treatment on a pier and beam house is a it, it, you got to crawl underneath there with a the hose and dig around each pier, and then you got to dig around the whole interior, and then around the. I mean, it's a it's a pain in the neck. So, yeah. Caribbean Beam House has its more um, challenges, especially on investing. You know, yeah, you're looking at that going. Your exposure to termites is a lot higher. So, I mean, there's, it's just a big difference, and it can become a very costly issue. Yeah, go, down go, the road with a asset sub-floor. that's supposed to be financially producing, right? Right. Your subfloor, if you go through and you get your floors and all those joists and all that other stuff eaten out by termites, well, you got a pretty expensive pair, repair. Yeah. So I mean, it's either way. What are what are some of the things that uh, cause attraction of termites? Other than okay, yeah, they're wood destruction insects. Like, what, if you're looking at a house and even before you've even done the test. Can you show up to a house and just look at certain things around the house and go, Oh, yeah, this house is a higher risk because of pyramid beam would be one. Um, pyramid okay. beam houses looking at that, you definitely want to crawl that crawl space and look around, um, have a pretty good view on it. The other one is to go in through and you know how you have high soil line that's where you have the bricks and then you have the foundation around a slab house. Well, a lot of people will put mulch and mulch down and mulch down. Next thing you know, it's above that. Um, where your slab is now it's kind of even with the bricks well now you can't see if there's termites that are going inside the house on the weep holes so that's one um wooden wooden structures contacting your house you know wood to ground contact you know there's a couple of different things you know if you're buying a property no matter what about what, trees up close to the house no not necessarily carpenter ranch yes probably yeah. a little bit more we only really have subterranean termites in this area in the dallas fourth area so yeah you know, we have subterranean subterranean okay. versus like drywood drywood they're predominantly in other areas houston has had some up north you know uh in this immediate area we only really deal with subterranean termites it's very yeah. rare that you deal with something else so um you know, if someone's buying a, a property, it's smart to have a pest control person come out there and at least take a look around and, you know, give you an honest assessment of like, hey, especially if it's pier and beam, yeah. you can lose really, really badly on a pier and beam house. If, if you're buying something and that floor is gone, I mean, I've seen people have $30,000 repair bills. Man, so um, our Merida house, when we bought that thing, it was bought as part of a construction project. It was a two bedroom, one bath house. And that's the one where we added the back two story. It's got the cover park in and all that. Well, when we got in there and we gutted the two bedroom, one bath portion of it was when my contract, Dustin called me and he's like, bro, this thing has been decimated by Bless you. No, nope. she doesn't even want any attention she's over like, here. Man, it was completely, probably because she's drinking. She's probably drinking about seven ounces of booze over there right about now. Completely doesn't want to be in the spotlight, but I'm going to say bless you. Right. Bless you, Sienna. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, uh, is we, we opened that thing up. We were like, and that ended up costing, God, I don't even remember. It was several thousand dollars more for the renovation because now we had to start ripping stuff out of there that we had not budgeted to rip out of there. So almost right? every house in that area, you could yeah. do a preventative termite treatment or you can do mm-hmm. it. If it's been, so a couple of years ago, the best product would last for five years. Um, it was called Termidor SC. Now they have a Termidor HE brand that can last up to nine years. But once you get past five years, predominantly it's it's no longer a valid treatment. So you, Termidor HE can now last for nine, but they only came out with a couple of years ago. So I was about to say if you're So there's house, no real case studies on does it now, last bad? Yeah. Now, there are some studies where Termidor has lasted 15 plus years with the U.S. Department of Forestry. Don't quote me on that. You want to Google that over there? Anyone so, anyway, <laughs> I'm getting him involved somehow hey, man, on this. He, he, so, he's over there. He's about half cross-eyed. Look, look at him. I ain't seen him smile this much since we started the show. He's googling. He he's is, on, he's having, are you he's on your phone and googling it? Time. Y'all, y'all can't invite me anywhere. I'm telling you, this is this is just a start. So, so, so yeah. So, so okay. So going away from termites, and going into the other side of pest control. Right? Okay. Like, what is some of the most common things? when you get a new client that they don't realize you should know this about your pest control. 
So the very first part is how we're different. And I think that might be yeah. a really good one. Yeah. So I started Bug Out Pest Control, um, bugoutpestcontrol.com. Anyway. Um, oh, we're going to get some plugs in here. Oh, uh, sweet. Worried, All right. Hey, I'm trying. Right. So anyways, yeah, I started anytime you got. I started Bug Out bugoutpestcontrol.com <laughs> anyway, say one more time just for the people in the back that got hearing aids on so anyways no I'm just playing no I'm not saying I see you adjusting your ear over there I'm like shit I called him out but anyway I know I told you this was going to get worse and worse so anyway um, I started bug out well anyway the, the difference on quarterly so quarterly pest control is where you set up your pest control on a quarterly basis it's automatically scheduled yeah so uh, the big difference between me and the guy that knocks doors so the guys that knock the doors i would never sign with one of those guys um why is that why because they they're contract based we're non-contract you can quit anytime you can sit over here and go tell me well you paid for a whole year you'd be dumb but yeah. if someone else yeah. were to get there and hire us as a pest control company and they're they paying can, quarterly right. they could stop they could stop anytime right? they can stop yeah. anytime yeah. hey guess yeah. what yeah. people go through divorces people go so i took everything i didn't like about other pest control companies and put it all in one i was like hey i don't like how everybody's on a contract you might have a job today especially over there he might have a job today but he might be fired tomorrow and yeah. he might need to cut down on that bill um are we done no, he's just like, don't be scaring him. Can't be scaring Gabe. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That was just can't be talking. scaring Gabe. All right. Okay. We Look need at, Gage. We need to get you a microphone. We need Gage. But anyway, we um, need Gage. This is so. Uh, we go through this. The, if we go through this whole damn bottle, that's gonna be show. awesome. This is not gonna be awesome. I got the the guests you saw walking around earlier. I gotta go show them some stuff. I'm gonna be out and have to pull up in an Uber to go take them. Uh, I'm driving a Jeep. Yeah, good luck for you. All right. In, in the wind. All right. So, so anyways, so yeah. um, the difference between us and another pest control company. So the guys that knock the doors, they, they lock you into a contract. They have high initials. We don't have an initial um, an initial service fee. We come out, we have one price for everybody in the Metroplex. Yeah. Um, it's $105 for a quarter, which is cheap. We offer one military discount. If you're military, veteran, teacher, law enforcement, blah, blah, blah. Um, we have so everybody if you live in South Lake and you live in a big house or if you live in Louisville you pay the same amount so that was one of the things that I did was um, I wanted everybody to pay the exact same amount and the reason why is because I might live next to a neighbor we have the same size house you're paying $150 I'm paying $125 a quarter he's paying you know we just created a flat system where it was like hey this is our price and this is our one discount and that's it and yeah. so then Another thing that we do is we mosquito spray every single property. So if I come out for your quarterly, all the houses we're treating for you, we yeah. come out, we do the mosquito spray and we do around the foundation. And So on the initial, we do the interior foundation and we, we mosquito spray. Well, now you're killing bugs way out in your yard because mosquito spray lasts. And then, so we kind of developed that perfect pest control. And that's where I'm talking about people don't see your drain. Yeah. The guy that worked for me that had previous pest control, he just didn't understand what I was doing. Yeah. And he, he saw it from... He worked at Terminix. He worked at all these other pest control companies. He's like, Scott, what you're doing doesn't make sense. I'm like, this is not the way that we do it. We charge them 175 because they live in a 5,200 square foot house, and we charge these people. It was, you know what I mean? I just said, nope, we're we're charging everybody. He just couldn't align with that thinking. Do you remember when you and I were going around and around about that military discount? Yeah, you told me not to charge it because you were yeah. like, hey, I want you to make money, and I'm like, look. We went around, around, around. You've actually we told me twice. You said, oh, do not go do through. Do not. Right. And you know this. So here's the thing, right? Is, told you I was. Oh. <laughs> You're looking at me like, wait a minute, this guy's turning down money. She takes another drink. She's like, he's every just, time we talk about losing money, Sienna's got to take a drink. How about that? Like, he, he just let's talk about him. how much money we lost. No, no, no. So, and that was the thing is, I remember when you sent that first invoice, and I, and as soon as I saw it, and I, I think it took like a day or something like that, and that's before we put it on the auto pay thing right. card. And then I was going through because I get like eight million emails, and I opened it up, and I was like, I thought it was like a hundred and five for property. Right. right. That's right. Right. 105 for property, right? For an Right. Yes. Yeah. And then I and it was not, I'm not going to quote what the discount was. But I was like that's not 105 for property. I picked the phone and I called you and I was like, "Hey, what the fuck, man?" And you were like, "No, bro, look, you, military discount and you're sending me a ton of business." And then and I was you could tell I was I was getting annoyed, right? Yeah. And I was like I was like I was like, "Hey, brother. I'm here like, to make you money. I'm here to make you money." Right. I want you to make money. You are you are over delivering on the value that I expected, and my and you know me, man, my expectations are already very high. Right. You were over delivering on that, 
And then finally, I think it was at a certain point, we were sitting there in a conversation. I was like, did I ask you for a fucking discount, man? I remember and that. You, yeah, and you were like, but, you know, and I was like, stop with the butts. Yeah. Look, stop with the butts. You, value is not tied to a dollar sign. You were over-delivering on the value that I expected. So at this point, I am, don't get me wrong, and I even said it, I am incredibly grateful right. that that's what you're wanting to do. But I want you to be incredibly grateful that I'm saying, piss off, no, charge me the full bill. Still hasn't happened. Right. Uh, it's still the discounted rate. I'm just, I'm one of those people that you're looking at me like, hey, this guy's and, crazy. And, and you know, like, and, and, it's just that, my prince. And, and it's, it, dri- it drives me nuts going back and forth. I was like, man, I want to, I want to, you know, but it was funny. And then, and then it was funny. There was another one that happened. And I was like, God damn it, Scott. I was like, what are you, so anyhow, but that's the thing is, but it, it's really funny. The reason I want to bring up this point in a, in a uh, conversation is this is when you have a trust between two people. Right. You're trying to fight to give me a discount. I'm trying to fight to tell you not to. And we're doing a ton of business together. We refer you to everybody. As a matter of fact, on the span group, right? Like anytime somebody buys a house, like you're on the preferred vendor list, right? Right. And and it was like, that's that's the relationship you want in business, right? When people go, hey, why are y'all fighting? He's like, well, you want to be a discount. I don't want him to give a discount. And they're like, so it's not over the service. No, no, no. He's over delivered. And they were like, so y'all are fighting because he wants to give you a discount. You don't want to take discount. I think that another, you know, it's just a prime example is uh, what Eric said, you know, hey, you're the one person I don't have to worry about because I sit over there and I check in and, hey, I've still got three more left. I didn't get them done today, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's no there's no Dude, middle ground. Like, it's uh, it's On this, top of that. Right. You, I remember, because uh, that was last, what was that, last week, right? Friday. And you sent, yeah, and you sent a text. You were like, man, we just got annihilated and we got a few more i was supposed to do them this afternoon yeah and i was like and i was and i think my response was yeah no worries man yeah i'm not i'm not worried like but that's the thing is we're over communicating with each other and uh and as we're over communicating is we're continuing that trust bond and that's really what i want Oh, he was giving me the signal for an I, hour. He was giving me the signal for I an hour. I saw him raise his finger, and I was like, did you oh, just flip him off? Yeah. Anyway. anyway. We get him one more of those. Right. It might come up as the middle finger instead of the, the what do you call that? Sorry. The pointing finger. Uh, but, no, that's that's the thing. is, And that's what I want, you know, is when, when well, first off, if somebody needs pest control, all right, go. Bugoutpestcontrol.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to get a great service. But more importantly is, for other people that are out there looking to be in business and who to do business with, like you to me and me to you. Or right? how to do business. How to do business. And for being our vets out there, because you and I have had many conversations on this, is so many vets get out there and they lose a purpose and they get lost. And it's like, no, you can go do something. And then all you got to do is find the people out there that want you to succeed, right? Like you want my properties to perform the best they can possibly perform and I want you to succeed the best you could possibly succeed and those are the relationships that you want to establish out there because not everybody is a client that you want I'll tell you in the and, and I know that he already gave you the one hour finger but um the hard part about the veteran space is also there's two different types there's the guys who still relate to the military and think they're in the military and they can go get hammered in the middle of the day on a podcast. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm talking about like the guys who think that they could show up to work drunk the next day and yeah. think they're in the barracks. Like I've had both sides. I've had the good side and I've had the bad side. Yeah. And I've been part of the good side and also the bad side. And I think we would so, agree. You're never going to find the middle. You're going to get, you're either going to get one or the other. Right. I was about to say, yeah. I've had guys show up and they're plastered and you're like, dude, I can't put you to work. You know, I've had, yeah. and no then the other the lazy, truck. it's yeah. still the same. It's still the same. Out of 100 people, you've got 10 that shouldn't even be there. You've got 80 that take up space, and you've got 10% of an organization Superstar. that makes shit happen. The ninjas. And out of yeah. that, there's three that, that are there, and they fall. there's always one that's one that's leading the pack, and they lead that 10%. That's still the 10% rule. Yeah. Then it's – that's just the way it is. Yeah. So even in the veteran space, I don't want to go through and brag about them too much because yeah. there's obviously some some people who need to go through and realize that hey civilian world doesn't work like that no like, no so, no I mean, anyway, and you're, that's no, a whole nother podcast oh it is it is a whole nother podcast and i have actually wanted to have that me and donnie bovine were talking you know we we got pretty uh we dove pretty deep into that and i have wanted to do like a panel type show of talking about that it's like you know here it is and and you know kind of in you 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 tripped on it uh in the beginning of the show is you got out and you're like hey I'm a vet. Hire me. And they're like, thanks for your service. Right. <laughs> right. And that was as far as it went. 
I got a yellow ribbon on my tree. Thanks for your service. I mean, same thing, you know, the end of 96 when I was getting out thinking, hey, man, decorated Marine coming Everybody out, should sir. hire me. Everybody I know. Everybody should hire me. And they were like, thank you for your service. Right? He's like, he's like, guys, we're over an hour. Like, let's cut this off. Like, we'll talk all day. It'll be 2 but, o'clock. But here's the There's thing. There's some midget right? strippers it, running around here. What doesn't help our situation is that 10% you're talking about on the lower end. Right. Right. Those are the, the 10% that are ninjas don't get the recognition like the 10% of the, oh, my God, he's going to walk in with a gun with his PTSD and everything else, blah, 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 blah right? And you're sitting there like, that's what, because that's what the media does the stories over, right? This episode brought to uh, you this by episode, t- here, Put it up towards the camera right over there. Put it up towards the camera right there. Thank you, Cheryl Hayes. Everybody say, thank you, Cheryl Hayes. Thank you, Cheryl Hayes. Yeah, so anyhow, is, but that is absolutely true because, what happens is successful veteran stories like yours and I, and that's another reason why I do the show and why I li- love having vets and especially Marines on here is because I am trying to push that platform of like, hey, stop listening to CNN and Fox News talking about the 10% of the shitbirds out there. Let's have a show talking about 10% of the superstars and ninjas out there that are killing it that didn't get there easy, right? I mean, how many sacrifices? I mean, showing up to work. Two weeks after you, and then by the way, that wasn't a broken femur. Like that bone was separated, right? And and, and so you, 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 all these things we go through to get there, and then people don't understand why we're so adamant and resilient. We're like, well, while you were doing your nine to five job, Monday through Friday, getting off at five, you were pretty much checked out by eight o'clock that morning when you showed up on a Friday, and you went and you had your barbecue on Saturday, and you went and watch the football game on Sunday and you showed up to work hungover on Monday, right? What were we doing Friday afternoon? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, other than this one-off. This is a Sorry. one-off. Other than this one-off. But I had and to point it out. And you know what? And you know what? Piss off. It's Thursday. It's not even Friday. You're going to work tomorrow, you son of a bitch. Uh, uh, but, but seriously, is what are we doing on Fridays? I mean, it's. I know what you even, were doing. You were working till zero dark thirty, and like I missed three houses, and I was like, "Bro, even if it's, it's Christ- eleven o'clock at Christmas, night. <laughs> New Year's, Thanksgiving." Yeah. Like I, yeah. I went through and got called for bed bugs at, on on a Thursday on on Thanksgiving, yeah. and I'm like, "Hey, I'll be there," and I was there two hours later. Yeah. And then Saturdays, what are you? What are you, like. are you? What are you doing on Saturdays? This Saturday? No, no, no. I mean, on Saturdays. I mean, I'm you? always constantly working. Right. Like if it's oh, if, oh, okay. So Saturdays. So 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 it means you take Sundays off, right? No. I, oh, so if you don't take Friday off, you don't take Saturday, Sunday, you must take Monday off. No, I don't have any okay, days. Tuesdays? It, rainy days. Wednesday? If it's raining, right. I take off. Only because you kind of don't have a choice because it's Correct. raining, right? So in other then words, I do admin on So Wednesdays. literally, right, so you're not off work. No. Right. And so that's the point I'm trying to make is when you're working seven days a week, and you it does, but – We'll take the suck all day long because it's no. ours. It's what we built. Right. right? That's what we want. And uh, so, you, all right, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to run, uh, have this thing run too, too. <laughs> Y'all too, bringing too. me on another one? Hey, what, they, they probably won't mind, but there's probably not going to be a, well, I'll now. I'll bring uh, it next time. Well, now there's only a quarter bottle of TX left, and that's not a small bottle uh, either. Did you put that out there? Did you take a picture of that and put that out there? Of what? Of that bottle? I and like, this is what goes on on the show? No. We need to get you a microphone. All right, all right. Hey, all right. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay, so I'm be so quiet all right. So out. aside from the business practice of what they get uh, uh, from your company that you do things different other than the door hangers, what is something about pest control itself? Right. So there's these. I'll give you an example. Um, like there was something said the other day. Didn't come from any of us. It was like going to put poison in the house. Oh, you mean environment? So yeah. The environment. Did you see me roll my eyes? No, 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 so, I did. Um, By the way, for those of y'all not watching, I'm going to give y'all an audible eye roll. Eye roll. So, okay. yeah, the that part is. 1976. They went through and created the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Science has came a long way. I mean, you've got. 25B exempt, which I'm not going to go into all the technicality. Like I said, there's a lot to learn in this. Um, <clears throat> We're a pretty heavily regulated industry. Your your regulations are out the wazoo. Um, the training alone 
26 hours on a what's called a VTR, verified training record. There's classes two hours in this, two hours in this, two hours in this, two hours in this. One crop duster doing one field puts out more than I can do in a whole year. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you look, and I'm not sitting over here and saying smart people in pest control, there's integrated pest management, which is going through and taking the steps that are not just pesticides. There's other things, screens and physical barriers and mesh and all this. There's, there's such an environmental push and companies have adapted to that. So it's not just this or this, it's kind of the in-between where if you don't use pesticides, go to your local Mexican food restaurant, Asian food restaurant, whatever kind of restaurant, don't treat it for bugs and let's see how long it takes for a thousand roaches to take over. Mm-hmm. You know, it isn't, an, it's an, a part where it's necessity. It's a necessity. And yeah. if you don't treat it, you'll have 10,000 roaches crawling through your lettuce at Walmart, you know? And so the products that we use on the residential side are proof for residential use. And then the products that are used, you know, there's industrial, there's all sorts of rules. Well, anyway, if you don't treat that, or keep up with it. So whenever I talk about environmentally, it's respecting the environment, which I'm 100% for, but it's also going through and knowing that the other side is, it's the in-between. So it's, people are using the wrong word when they say poison. Well, to a degree, there is poisons used in, yeah. you know, we call them products. If you right. don't really know, that's a yeah. softer word and this and that. But um, is, I mean, is anybody going to die from you going in there and spraying a house? Not from normal pest control. Right. Now, I mean, if now, I th- now, now, if you're a meth factory, like the example you were talking about out in Amarillo, where he's got a bunch of stuff under there, which probably he was using to cook meth anyways, that's a different one-off situation. Somebody coming in and spraying the inside of your house once and in the perimeter every other time after that. Right. So on general basic pest yeah. control, you're, you're talking about a very minimally used toxicity and all this other stuff. Like you go into Arby's and you're going to run into it every single day. Now, you're talking about that guy being a meth person. I don't want to be... I don't want to assume that he was. So what he did was he used a product that was not designed for residential use. There we go. Um, I think someone's tapped out over there. You going again? Uh, so anyways, <laughs> she's like, well, y'all hurry up and wrap this I know, damn show I up. I know. I keep yeah, going yeah. through. So, hey, on, by the way, you are my first bourbon show. Sweet. Yeah. Look at that. Y'all want a high five too or no? He's like, just hurry anyway, up and finish this damn show. So... <laughs> Um, on but general basic yeah. pest control, you're talking about using products that are very, very minimal. minimal. This kicked in now. Um, the guy on Amarillo, he used some stuff that shouldn't be used around a residential house. And that's kind of knowing he, he went to a store from what I understand. I don't want to go through and get yeah, labeled yeah, yeah. in something. Just get the I, highlights. Right. I was about to say, I don't want to go through and get too involved in yeah. something that I don't really know a whole lot about. Yeah. Um, from what I understand is he used a product that mixed with water creates a toxic gas and it killed everybody and anyway i don't know yeah. the story and i don't want to go yeah. through and get labeled as right speaking point of point point i don't want to get is, sued yes is there it, it, or is there a low level version of poisons in this yes because you're there to kill bugs but at the on end your, of the day is it harmful inside of a house on your general basic pest control no no especially, especially when you have someone with a ne- moral and ethical compass that's using the right regulated products right, right? i was about to say yeah. doing so Texas Department of Agriculture creates these rules in the Environmental Protection Agency. I mean, I can go through Office of Pesticide Management. There's all sorts of stuff. Anyways, long story short, a reputable company, whether it be myself with bugoutpestcontrol.com, or <laughs> look at that. I'm really good at throwing that you in are, there. So anyways, are, I'm, I'm good. You nail every time. I know. I'm trying. Dude, I'm going to so, wake up in the middle of the night and be like, bugoutpestcontrol.com. I, I know. <laughs> I was about to say, you're going to answer your phone. So a reputable company whether it be Orkin, Terminex, you know, those guys, they, yeah. they go through the training, they're huge, this and that, they follow the T. In some of the smaller companies, this and that, most 90% of the people that are have gone through training, which it requires a license, insured, it's the same thing, most of them. It's the ones that have not gone through training, that don't have the licensing, that go through and say, hey, I'm gonna go through and create a pest control company, and they're picking out something that put me. But anyways, long story short, to answer your question, which I answered the long way because we've been drinking, yeah. um, <laughs> Referring back to the the normal answer is most licensed, trained, reputable companies, whether myself, all of them are going to use. Now the product is how much do they spend? How good is their products? Because we have a list a mile yep. long that we, I can choose from. I can go boom, 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 boom. Everybody has that list. There's not a magic carpet that I've got that they don't. Now I choose to spend more 
for better quality products and I have better, but th- does that make sense? Like, yeah. uh, no, 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 I don't no. have a magic carpet. Mine's one, more of one million, one million percent. And now I'm going to leave you this this last question, right? It, which is, what is the biggest reason? And, and this is this is an open ended question, right? Uh, I don't even know. And especially after, um, I think we're down to it. <laughs> We've almost polished that off. Man, man, we ran through that thing in an hour. Sponsored I'm by it. CX Bourbon. CX Bourbon. Again. Uh, actually, I'm going to be- I'm going to blame uh, Sienna and Gage. They helped us with that. Uh, you had this plan. Yeah, you did. And she's like, "Hurry up, finish the show, so we can go home." They got to drive back to like the other side of Dallas. You know, we get the easy job. We sit here and talk. They actually do. I still got to drive home. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a nap I'm in take the a lobby group from here. Right? Lobby. I'm going to sit over here and hang out a couple hours, and drink some water, like. It's going to take me two hours so, to get home. So but anyway, if, if, if you've got a customer out there, right, a potential customer, okay, that is like, I'm trying to decide, do I get pest control or I don't get pest control? Whether it's your company or any other company, what is something you would say as to why they should get pest control? And I know you probably got eight thousand answers, but I, what would be the like? This is absolutely why you should get pest control. So I think that the answer is is that um, you should just call or, well, get on the line and go to www.bugoutpestcontrol.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, the answer is is that, you know, it's really kind of fitting. So I grew up, you know, I've got a really unique story as a kid. I went from even before the Marine Corps, I grew up as a hard kid. My grandparents, my grandpa helped create Walmart, which is crazy. He was a very original person in that and then left. I don't, I don't know the story. I wasn't born yet. Um, I grew up, my, the rest of my family had a lot of money. And then for some reason, my dad was the broke one that went through and decided to hang out and date strippers and do all that other fun stuff. But anyways, long story short. Um, Does my, that go back to when you were talking about being a stripper on your uh, resume as well? No, that's... That was total dig. Total. That was some. Yeah. That was some marine shit, right? Right. There. Getting yeah. back. So yeah. anyway, yeah. my the long story short is is my grandparents and the rest of my family was wealthy. Um, I grew up. My dad was somehow cut off from all that or screwed it up. I don't know what happened, but we grew up kind of really um, hard. It was rough. Um, less fortunate. I, less fortunate is a good word. You know, I my cousins and everybody else went to Rice and all this other like SMU. They were pretty fancy. Um, and you went to the University of the United States Marine Corps. Right, I went to the Marine Corps. But growing up, we had – my dad would go out and do his own pest control, and it didn't work. But I grew up with roaches inside our house. Like, everybody calls them water bugs, politically yeah. correct. Water bugs, yeah. they're fucking roaches. We can't, we can't so anyways, call them roaches anymore? Well, I guess – Are you are you serious? I don't know. Hey, Google – yeah, Google that. American – I'm telling you. I'm telling you If right this now. bullshit in this country has gotten this bad, she, I can't say roaches anymore, I'm going to be really annoyed. She's looking right over there going, what? Yeah, so Gage, water bugs. Gage is, Gage is looking up. Our All these people go through right and now. have a really good name, water bugs, and I'm like, no, those are roaches. But anyways, we'll go ahead and. But anyways, I grew up with ro- I grew up with bugs, and my dad would do his own, and he would go out there with seven dust and do all sorts of stuff and spray all that garden stuff from like Ace. Um, I never knew that you could have a company come out and do pest control. I didn't know that, and my dad didn't want to pay for that. But anyways, long story short. I don't know if that's what brought me in here, what didn't. Like, I don't know how it all aligned, but I got into the industry. So you're asking the question was, if somebody if is, someone is wants trying to, to decide or not, whether or not they should th- or should not have pest control. I think it matches, you know, I don't like mosquitoes. We mosquito spray. You know, I think it matches the individual. I'm, there's not anything that forces that decision. I think it's an independent decision that someone goes through and says, hey, I don't, I want this taken care of because I don't like these results. And, you know, there's nothing that... So the answer is it comes down to the individual. There's not yeah. anything that I can say that would go through and um, force that issue. It's like, hey, this and this and this. No, guess what? You don't like mosquitoes? Call us. Hey, you don't like roaches? Call us. Blah, I, was blah, trying, blah. I was trying to do this on my last episode. Here's one of the things I love about you, right? One of the many, many, many things. All right. The fact that I drink whiskey on your show. Well, you drink whiskey. You're the first one. Okay. We're gonna, <laughs> You're going to start bringing it to every show. Here, here's old James Peterson. Watch this. We're only going to do it really quick. Yeah, because we're like an hour and a half in. Let's see if he answers. They're like, please, just shut this down. He's just like, hurry up. Let's just go home. He's not even, he better answer. Come on. They better not. They might still be in that damn meeting. You want me to call him too? Yeah, you call him too. Put it on speaker. (laughs) But tell him you're on the show. Tell him we're live on the show. I'll be like, hey. Tell him we're live on the show. He's not answering. Aaron, say, hey, we're on the show. Answer. 
answer live with Scott. Oh, I'm calling him. All right. Tell him as soon as he answers. We're, we're live on the show. That'd be fun if you picked up. I would. Oh, I'd be you, like, you know, I'm going to fire this. <laughs> he picks up for you and he didn't pick it for me. You want to call Eric next? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, you should have had another drink. Yeah. You, you want one more? I'm good. No. He, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, he'd be like, I'm good. He'd be like eight o'clock. He'd be like, all right, that was the longest show All in the right, world. I'm doing this one more time. If he doesn't answer, we'll leave it alone. Okay. Because this is this is this is one. Uh, is this the most entertaining one? That you well, made? I don't know what's going on. Oh, he's he, just he, calling me back. He's calling uh, me uh, back. Uh, oh, oh. Hold on. Hey, we're live on the show. Here, put it Hello? on speaker. Put it on speaker. All right, you on speaker. All right. Hey, what business are we not in? Convincing business, obviously. Okay, hang up on him now. Hey, uh, we we've been drinking yeah. TX on the show. Yeah. Here, hang it up on him. We gotta oh. get them out of here. All right, we All gotta right. get going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting there like, what the hell are y'all doing? I know. He's so like, the point being is this: is you've never been in the convincing business. You were like, hey, look, that's I a great an, I have a moral and ethical compass. I want to give you the best product. I want to over deliver on what value says, and that is amazing, right? And so, for anybody out there listening right now, is if you're wondering if you should or shouldn't have pest control, the one thing you don't have to worry about. Bugoutpestcontrol.com. <laughs> yeah, is whenever I need a key. Whenever, whenever, whenever he talks with you, he's not there to sell you. He's there to to describe the product that he has and what it's meant to do, and he's not there to convince you. And you're going to get a very, very fair price. And if you're a vet and you get a discount, don't be cheap because I'm trying to give this guy more money anyways. Uh, so hey, Scott, this this has absolutely been. One of my favorite shows, N- namely because we are literally through a whole entire bottle of uh, TX. Thank you, Cheryl Hayes. Uh, and um, but, and, man, God, we really did go through a lot of that. Uh, so I don't know, you know. Th- all right, no, I I'd like to end. <laughs> I like to end every one of these with, let's say, how old are you now? Forty. Forty. You hit the big four zero. Yeah. Oh, well, it could have been, it could be like me where, you know, hitting that half century mark and a couple of weeks ago, my kid flew in town for my birthday and she's like, dad, you're, you realize you're closer to death than birth. You know, we could talk like, yeah, yeah, I know. No, I did not. No, no. You were talking. What do you think, Gage? What percentage of time? 60, 40, 70, 30. I don't know. You want to Google it? Know. You want to Google it? He still no. smashed from the TS whiskey know. he was drinking, right? Hey, by the way, Sienna, I hope he doesn't break your equipment whenever he's putting this up, whenever we uh, disassemble this thing. Uh, and, and don't worry, you're not fired or anything else like that. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell him, you cannot fire him. For drinking on the job. <laughs> For drinking on the I job. I just want to literally. point out, like. Okay, so I like, to, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, like to, I like to end every one of these with, okay, so you're at 40. You open a time capsule that 20-year-old self left, and you pull out this magical card that says, you can go back in time 20 years ago to 20-year-old Scott. And you could tell 20-year-old Scott either do or don't do this. And 20-year-old Scott is said on this magical card, I will listen to this one thing. What would be that one thing you would tell 20-year-old Scott Myers? Oh, man, I feel like I'm on that. There's about a million things I'd write down. You can't give a million things. It's got to be the most meaningful thing. And you got true serum in you, like literally half a bottle of TX. So let's hear it. Oh, what would I give myself? My twenty-year-old, I don't know. Probably don't fall in love with midgets. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking at Gage. So, okay, expand on that. No, expand just, on that. No, I'm just playing. Don't. I don't, don't think you are. No, no. <laughs> you see a look on her face. I'm sure. <laughs> no, mine would have to sit over here and say, uh, "Don't get married." That's it. I don't have anything else other than that. Don't get married. Don't, Gage, I don't think we've had that one, have we? Don't get married. That one. Yeah. No, yeah. We, so here's the funny thing. No kidding. And this is why I'm actually laughing with either option one. <laughs> leave me. I told you there's a million things. But. Right. Is uh, don't get married. So we've had this show uh, now, what are we, 96, 96 recordings? Something like that. We're almost at 100 recordings. Sweet. Uh, Am I coming back for 97, that? 98, That's how long 99? you've been handling us. That's right. Oh, 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 trust me, on the two-year mark when the 
it, what is it, the FDC or whoever it is doesn't come down and shut me down or Twitter or whoever else, uh, is this is we ask that question at the end of every episode. And now after 96 recordings, we've never had anybody give the same answer. No kidding. Some have been somewhat similar, but no one's ever given the similar, same, same answer. No one likes midgets? <laughs> you kind of gave two, but you were leaning more towards the don't get married. Yeah. And uh, which I feel like was more of a, hey, this is not to be not successful, Scott, but because I did open it up and say, either do or don't do my, this. And you open it up with no, don't get married. My, my, my true answer is don't ever give up. No matter how many, like we talked about that a little bit earlier. And I think that yeah. was something that you asked before. Yeah. Um, don't ever give up, no matter what. Like if you've got a dream, if you've got. It's, it's hell, and I, and I can only describe little parts of hell. Um, the true answer is don't ever give up. And it's every person that's ever gotten successful, there, you've got to work for it. There's no one that's going to ever hand it out. Um, Tiger Woods didn't come over there and start shooting holes in one. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't know if it's shooting, is, but swinging. Whatever. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. long story. Um, it's hard. It's, it's, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do, especially, you know, some people get it handed to them, and you can't buy a legacy. You can't. Well, let's, I, tell, let's tell the truth on that. Right. Don't ever give up, which you never had. Never will. Never will. But tell me about those dark nights when you're sitting there like, why in the hell am I doing this? There's the knives in your back. Like, I've yeah. been through some – I've had people stealing. Um, I had a really good account. I won't say who they are, even though they're a bunch of assholes. No, if they're I don't about. Anyways. We've had, we've, had, we've had a couple of drinks over that one. They went through and um, I lost $40,000 from one person not paying their bill, and it affected and it a lot a, of – It was a person. It was, it was an entity it was that could have more than paid. Right. Yeah, they're could two, have more than paid. $2 billion a year. Yeah. And – one of their managers said, hey, these guys don't pay their bills and this and this and this. I saved them a lot of money by being – that. in everybody, whenever I was making really, really good money, because it's been a roller coaster. It's been, hey, good money, down poor. Good money, poor. Good money, poor. I don't know how that works. I, hopefully it just goes up from here. But anyway, um, whenever I was around making good money, everybody wanted to hang out and party and do this and this and this, and everybody's your friend. And then all of a sudden, whenever you hit your low spot, whenever – I had to walk away from that company based on – moral like i could have went through and kept paying my bills but i couldn't because i knew how they worked um i walked away so long story short i billed two hundred ten thousand dollars. they paid me 160 it's about forty thousand fifty thousand anyway everybody's like why didn't you sue for this well i'm just gonna go out and make it again but everybody was hanging out and hanging out and hey we're going out and whenever i was paying all the everybody's tabs and this and this and this or dinner whenever you're riding high everybody wants to ride with you and then all of a sudden yeah. whenever you hit low Sometimes you're sitting in your garage and you're sitting over there wondering if you even want to if you want to give up whether you want to. I've been on th- I've been at the very bottom. Like I've 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 went through and been backstabbed so bad that you wonder if you want to wake up the next day. You wonder if you want to light your garage on fire. You wonder. I can go through the whole list and yeah. that's a real conversation. But what did you do the next morning? Woke up and fucking grinded. So mine's never give up because I've got some really good things going on. Um, I. I talk about the NDA. I can't tell you yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, But it's huge. And I can't wait. Right. We'll that talk about that it later. Does, anyway. When that one does get done, yeah. I can't wait to bring you back on the show. You just but wait. This is, uh, but this is, this is you know, again, one of the many things I love about you. And and, uh, and, and your response is, again, yet uh, among almost 100 recordings that hadn't been said, besides, well, the midgets and don't get married. Um, <laughs> is, don't get it, it, right. And I'm it, hitting it, this again. It, it, and I think we are going to finish that thing before we do finish getting out of here. It might be after we've done, been done getting recording and everything else, but is this is uh, you're a resilient person who has absolutely delivered. No, no, no. You can talk. I'm trying to say oh, something sorry. nice. I'm being like <laughs> you know everybody always accuses me of not being a, uh, uh, having empathy or harmonious. But hey, hey, seriously, brother, here's the deal. You have absolutely 100% demonstrated that you're going to do whatever it takes. But what I want the audience to hear with what you said is don't give up doesn't mean that sometimes you don't go to bed thinking, I should just give up because why the hell am I doing all this bullshit, right? But then when you wake up the next morning, you go make the fucking grind, just like you said. And that's, that's the key right there, right? Get up, make the grind. But it's okay to actually go to sleep and go, Man, why the hell am I doing this? Matter of fact, if you ever, if you have a business, you go to bed at night 
365, is that, is that what it, 365 days in a year? 365 nights in a year, and you go, I'm lovely from the beginning to the end. You're either lying to yourself or you're Bernie Madoff. You've been cheating everybody until you get caught and you go to prison. Because guess what? You're going to have those days, but it's not how you go to bed. It's how you wake up. Right, brother? Yeah. I agree with that. All right. Well, anyway, let's do it. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do that final plug. So, Scott Myers. Bugoutpestcontrol.com. Dot com. And this was an absolute fun episode. As a matter of fact, Erin, she's gonna, probably going to go, I'm not sure we should have bourbon. I'm going to be like, well, we can have bourbon. She's going to go, but you don't have to drink the whole bottle. Uh, So anyhow, hey, all all seriousness, audience, when you're out there, uh, even if you don't live in the Metroplex, still call Scott. He's got contacts everywhere. If you live in a different market, he's going to find somebody. We're creating a national company. Creating a national company. That's one of the secrets. That, As a matter of fact, if he gets enough calls uh, from your area, maybe he just comes and builds a company there to be able to service you because I can tell you this. Here's a couple of things you're going to get out of Scott. One, you're going to get a moral and ethical person in business. Two, he's going to define the value, but he's going to over-deliver on that value. And three, you can trust the guy. Not just because he's a Marine, not just because, you know, with Midget's and ex-wife thing, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it, seriously, he, he can absolutely deliver because one of the reasons – my business model has worked so well, and we're buying on an average. I think we're at uh, on an average of buying about a million dollars a week worth of assets right now, is because Scott is one of the key players in this because he's there to tell you the truth. He's not going to lie to you. And in case you're driving down the road and you miss the bugoutpestcontrol.com, you can always go to our website at myexperiencerealtor.com. That's experience with an ED. Click on read more down to Scott Myers at bugoutpestcontrol.com. And you will be able to get connected with him. And even if you're not living in the area, he'll maybe he'll just come build a company in your area. And uh, more importantly, actually less importantly, if you are looking to buy and sell real estate anywhere on the planet, go to the homepage, click find a trusted professional, and we'll get you taken care of. Scott. Semper Fidelis, brother. Thank you for coming on the show.